If you've ever suffered hay fever or allergies, you'd realise how hard gardening really is. Even going outside can cause an attack. And with our outdoors lifestyle, we're blessed with beautiful climate. There's a real focus of being in the garden in Australia. And with 20% of Australians who suffer hay fever, it makes it really hard. Well, I've got some tips that might help you garden and reduce hay fever attacks. One plant, look for something with low pollen. This wax is perfect. The finer the pollen grains of plants, the worse it is. At this time of the year, many people blame wattles and the brightest of the flowering plants. But did you know that conifers can be some of the main offenders? Grasses and weeds can cause a problem. The trick is to not let weeds flower in the garden. Pull them up and turn them into compost before they cause a problem. These plants are wind pollinated. As the lawn speeds up its growth at the moment, it can also be a trigger as it flowers in spring. Mow when there's heavy dew, or if your lawn is very established and been around for years, it may be time to replace the variety. Soft leaf buffalo varieties have a lower pollen count or select one of the hybrid cooch varieties. Avoid highly perfumed plants as the heady fragrance can often cause an allergic reaction. Avoid plants such as jasmine. The common jasmine is one of the worst. Instead, plant the native wisteria. It is absolutely fantastic, grows fast, is hardy, and will grow in most areas in Australia. The trick is to look for plants that are pollinated by insects. Many of our native plants fall into this category. Kangaroo paws are some of the best. They can be grown in a pot or perform just as well in the ground. They've been designed for bird pollinating. As the bird comes in to feed on the nectar, the pollen hits the back of its neck and it's transferred to the next flower. Nature is a genius. Ground covering plants are mostly insect pollinators. Because they flower so close to the ground, the ants and all those creepy crawlies fly into and move into each flower and then move on to the next one. Now they're ideal for allergy sufferers and Canadians, well, that'd be my choice. They're fast growing, they are hardy, drought tolerant and also can be trimmed back at any time of the year. To keep these looking fantastic, all they need is controlled release fertiliser at planting and then at the beginning of autumn and at the beginning of spring. To keep native plants healthy and ensuring they continue to flower, it's time to feed them with a specific fertiliser for natives. This will also help with flowering for the following season. We need to keep the birds and insects happy in the garden. One last tip, if you've got a favourite plant in your garden that causes a big problem to you or anyone in the family, don't be scared to prune it before it flowers. That way you remove the trigger and you still get to enjoy the plant.